私のことはお構いなく Greetings everyone, this is BJ Black from No Export for You and welcome to part 94 of my Let's Play of Ama Yui Castle Meister. This time we get to choose between Rosaline and Mikshoana. And we chose Rosaline last time, but Mikshoana's come up too. Yeah, I forget what I was saying. So, Mikshwana says, thanks for coming and having these meetings with her, even though he, she knows he's busy and all. Well, it's alright. <laughs> Avaro himself wants to help out, after all. So, this is our third attempt. So, we make some time to do these things and meet in these little unfrequent little locations. So, before, and the time before that, we went through a lot of work and did got a pretty bitter result from it. Yeah, the saddest part of it really is that we didn't get the results we were looking for. Although, Mikshuana is thanking us for taking the time. It may be that we're just getting used to these conversations and all. So, Hikshuana, have you thought of anything good in this regard? Well, she's thought about it, but she's getting the feeling like no matter what we try, we're going to end up with the same result. Yeah. Avaro as well has gotten that kind of feeling. So, what should we do next time? If we continue like this, we're going to get stuck in a rut. Yeah, or Avaro thinks to himself, we're rather stuck in a rut already. He can't really imagine a situation where we're going to do well. So, if it's gotten to this point, how about we draw some fresh blood into these meetings? How is, as someone we can draw into this and rely on, how about our Goddess of Connections, Fia? <laughs> Fia, huh? Well, think about it a second. She looks conflicted about it, and goes silent. But with a firm expression, she finally agrees. So although she doesn't really it goes against her desires a bit. She says it can't be helped, so it's true we're not coming up with it anything on our own. So as of our recommends, we should go get her third party opinion for on this matter. Alright then. At least if we can do something it's better than doing nothing. Funny, she was so adamant against it at the beginning. So anyway, we get to the end, we explain Mikshuana's objective. And also what we've done up to now. So, us guys did all that, did we? Hey, don't sound so exasperated. We're kind of desperate here. <laughs> and Mikshuan apologizes for bringing our troubles to her. Uh, 
Well, she says you don't really need to apologize, but she would have liked to have watched. She wanted to watch, huh? Yeah, it was kind of interesting, ultimately. So then, what would they like Fia to do? <laughs> so, although it is greatly embarrassing to her, she's going to ask, and as her voice trails off into smaller and smaller tones, well, she's really embarrassed by this and she doesn't want to say it in front of people, etc. Is that to say that when you said all these things to Avaro, you weren't particularly embarrassed? Rather like, uh, Oh, yes. What she said is she doesn't want to say it in front of people. She said it in, Avaro, in front of Avaro, so Avaro's thinking to himself, So I'm not people to you, huh? Alright, let's not think. read Avaro's thoughts. Let's see what Fia has to say. And she says it's alright. Give it to her. Well, thanks. So then, she'd like to request instruction on how to make good friends. Making friends? Hey. Well, yes, she's bad at conversation skills, so she thinks that she can't make people enjoy themselves when talking to them. So she, they've tried some things that they've thought of, but it hasn't gone the way they wanted. So what should they do in order to get her making friends like Fia and the rest of them do? Fia says Mikshuana should be just fine the way she is. Just like she is, huh? Yes. Yeah, you'll be fine just like this. Okay, but she can't make friends. The results are proof enough of that. So, Fia thinks that it's great that Mikshuana has tried to better herself with all this effort. And Fia thinks that even as she is now, Mikshuana is actually really charming. So there should be other people around who will, who will have that same assessment of her. And from Fia's personal perspective, with her going through all this effort and things not turning out like she wanted, if this continues, Mikshuana will come to kind of hate herself, and that would make Fia quite sad. Does it really seem like Mikshuana hates herself? Fia thinks that Mikshuana is just a step away from that, yes. And she is pretty depressed about this.
<laughs> so receiving this from Fia makes you want to hide your face a moment. So Fia doesn't want Mikshuana to be in such a troubled position any longer. So as her friend, she's going to give Mikshuana some friendly advice. There are people that won't like you no matter what. But then there are also people that will like you even if you don't particularly try hard. So, Fia thought that rather than unreasonably attempting to change yourself into someone charming, you should search for people who will accept you the way you are. So, at the very least, Fia has gotten the impression of her being someone who is trying so hard to make friends and going at it seriously and giving all her effort in. Fia says this her as actually quite cute. So, Mikshuana has a question here. She's anxious to ask this, but also a little bit worried. But she asks... So, are Mikshuana and Fia friends then? Well, of course. Because after all, they're living together, they're allied together on the castle. So, in fact, they're probably more than friends. Uh, yes, but Mikshrana is actually overseeing Fia. Remember the, uh... Yeah, Fia knows. And you're always trying hard every day with it. So, her role under her duties with Nazteria is to make sure she doesn't commit sins and if they can't get her separated from the taboo that is the castle, at some time she's going to have to fulfill her mission and destroy her along with the castle. <laughs> but being so dutiful and serious in pursuing her duties, she actually thinks that that's kind of Mikshuana's charm. So, how about from now on, they Mikshuana and Fia eat together and play together and things. Since the subject of Mikshuana's monitoring is Fia, when the two of them are together, that makes her job easier, won't it? <laughs> yes. Mikshuana is a bit at a loss for words and, you know, answers the question. Well, at the very least, Fia seems to like this Mikshuana who hasn't put on all these charms. Yeah, that's true. 
So in the end, rather than going through all that effort, all she needed to do was take one step just as she was. Well, that's good. So, since you've come to the castle, you've made your first friend. Isn't that great? Yeah, she is very happy. Avaro thinks that her smile is quite bli quite bright. So, Avaro says, I guess my help is unnecessary. You'll be alright now, right? Yes. Although they didn't get results and in fact it was pretty much meaningless all these stuff we did. Thanks for all your help. Avara's getting the feeling like... Her feeling of gratitude is not really being conveyed to him. Ah, well, whatever. As long as it turned out well. So, does it seem like you'll be able to continue trying this stuff from now on? Yeah, so... From now on, she feels like she can continue making friends like this. Or finding people who will be her friend. Well. Having Fia's words supporting her as her irreplaceable friend. Yeah. So that's the end of these meetings. So in the end we did make one friend. So one, one, one of our worries has been reduced. So in the end, it's a good ending. <laughs> but it seems like from the very beginning we should have just talked to Fia in the first place. Alright, Mikshana. <laughs> okay, yes, what is it? My friend got the present goddess Fia. <laughs> yeah. That's a pretty long in entrance to saying to saying Fia's name here. And furthermore, you don't need to attach Sama to that. Well, no. When addressing a god, she cannot drop the honorifics. Even as a friend, she has to protect that much. How serious. But that's also a good point. Yeah, well, anyway. Although she said it was like... Fia was the first person she's talked to uh, without any of these uh... oh man I hate it when I forget those words huh. so anyway they were talking like Fia's been the first person that Mikshuana has talked to without any uh ornaments to her personality but Fia thinks that Fia isn't the first person she talked to like this what you mean well who would it be whom Mikshuana has been talking to naturally and having fun conversations with. So, since coming to the castle, someone's, she's always been interacting naturally with someone. 
I don't like where this is going. But she just tilts her head and starts trying to run through the people she knows. Hmm, well, isn't this interesting? This didn't come up before the Mikshuana scene. But anyway, you're in line, Kisner. Okay, so we're getting a report from the Infrus knights that are on the castle. So the village is in the vicinity of the way of flowing spirits have been attacked by ghosts recently. Yep, there have been casualties in the various villages in that region. So, we got this report and the guy giving it is pretty serious but also a bit worried. So we got this information from a merchant that had come to the castle. And furthermore, that the kingdom had been deploying forces to deal with it. So I don't know if so the defense of the village and the defeat of the ghosts has not been going well. They're quite aggressively powerful and there are a pretty good number of them. So the number incre is increasing. Well, we have monster problems here and there. But since these spirits don't have a physical form, it's actually a pretty big problem. But why are you giving this report to Avaro, of all people? Well, he was thinking that we in Guadalcuna company should be reported to. Okay, Avaro, rub your two brain cells together, see if something comes up. It doesn't sound like it's a request from the Knights. So he thinks about why they would want to tell him this. Oh, naturally he thinks of it immediately, huh? If it's the way of flowing spirits, it probably has something to do with Rosaline. Since we brought her from there, she might know something about it. Alright then, let's go have a talk with her. So we convey all this information on to her. And as we do it, her face grows pale. Well, she's normally pale, isn't she? It's her fault! Alright, that solves that. Ah, what have I done? If I had just thought about it, it wouldn't have turned out like this. <laughs> okay, so apparently this is a surprise to her. Although she never gave it much thought. So what's going on here? It's not like she's directing them to do this. How could this be her fault? So before she was directing a bunch of the ghosts in that region, under orders from Gilsh, Well, what she's saying is that she should never have left. So she was just thinking about her curse and getting out of her curse and she got about, about her role there. So it's her responsibility. And she averts her eyes and starts looking really guilty. Well, 
So, apologizing to Avaro, she says she will be leaving now. Oh, you're going to the Way of Flowing Spirits then? Well, yes. She nods in her scent and... What she says next, Avaro really gets bad about. And then she won't be returning. Huh? Well, in that case, thanks for everything up to now. And for being kind to her and everything. She's been very happy here. Oh, like this is going to go over. So, it pains her a bit to not be able to convey her gratitude to everyone else. But she's going to entrust that to Avaro. Come on, what do you say? Hey. So, meeting everybody and coming here, she has been very blessed, but she won't be able to come. She has to go back there. So, it looks like she's made up her mind. And she continues talking. Avaro's not quite keeping up because he can't wrap his head around it. Okay, so anyway, he doesn't fully understand the circumstances here. If Rosaline knows the cause of these spirits going out and causing a ruckus, then you should probably properly explain it. So, she's abandoned her role, the one given to her by the Infru's kingdom. So, without setting up anybody to carry on after her, she just went on her own, following her own desires, and left the tower. This is the reason why the spirits have gotten angry. They don't have anybody to apply to in there, and they don't know where to go, so they've gotten lost. Rosaline actually seems to be a little bit worked up about this. But, I've always getting the picture here. Alright, I get the picture, he says. So, since Rosalina was handling the spirits while she was there, and nobody's taken her place, that's why the spirits have gotten wild. Is that right? Yes, that understanding is correct. Okay, then. And since she feels it's her responsibility, she's going to go to the Way of Flowing Spirits and solve the problem. And yes. It's her role to keep the spirits quiet as the administrator in there. And for forgetting her role, she has to go and pay off that particular sin. Hmm. I don't know if forgetting your role in this is considered a sin, but whatever. So, that's the reason why Rosaline wants to do that. Alright, Avaro says he'll go too. And he's going to call everybody in. You don't need to go by yourself. In fact, we don't want you to go by yourself. Let's all go handle it together. You don't mind, right? Hmm, she might. 
Well, anyway, we need to deal with the ones that have gotten out of hand already. And if there's more people, that means that it'll be a little easier on us. You are our ally, after all. If you're in trouble, we want to help. And furthermore, in, in terms of direct causes of this, Avaro is also involved. After all, he's the one who broke Rosaline's curse and drew her out of the tower in the first place. If Rosaline is responsible, then Avaro should be considered responsible as well. Rosaline smiles just a little bit at this display of solidarity. <laughs> so, thanks to you, Avaro. As expected, he is quite kind. So, this is the end. She won't hold back and she will rely upon him. Ah, you don't need to say it like it's the end and everything. But, she, uh, in her eyes, there's this sadness as well as resolve. Now these serious girls can't do anything with them. So we want to think about what we're going to do with this problem, but first of all we need to calm down the spirits that have gotten unruly. And with this we have a new map off in the way of flowing spirits to visit. All right, Kisnir, let's hear it. So, Avaro apparently is gun running around the castle on his usual rounds when he sees an unusual coupling. It doesn't seem like a couple of people who have a lot of common points. So those first two lines make it sound like Avaro's watching these two interact. But the rest of the conversation, Avaro has nothing. It doesn't even seem like he's listening. He's directly involved in it. Ha, huh, anyway, Kisner says... Uh, she's saying, apparently, they're in this conversation and they've already talked a bit. So, Kisner sees what Mikshuan is saying and thinks it will be useful. Ah, well, no. If it's helpful to me, to Kisner, then Mikshuan is happy to. So it seems they're talking about battling. The two of them are both on the front line a lot, so. I guess that is a common point. And furthermore, wielding a spear seems pretty difficult to kiss near. After all, you need to be watch out for everything around you. Well, Mikshuana does this every day, so she's kind of gotten used to that aspect. And furthermore, Kisner herself has that sword, and she's used to it as well. That's true. In her country, that's how, kind of how you did it when you went to, to be a warrior. Normally it would be a sword. Uh, though, so she has an idea to share with Mikshuana. It's a bit odd coming from her, but she wants to give it a shot. Well, whether Mikshuana is okay with it depends on the content of it. So, what's up? Uh, 
であれば連携も取りやすいのではと思ってます。So since the two of them are frontline fighters and they both understand things from that side of the battle, she thinks it's possible that they'll be able to coordinate their attacks. Coordination, huh? So apparently they work together a bit and do work something out. Oh, and how nice. Coordinated skills. And that's that. Yeah, I wonder if Aura was really in that conversation, because it seems more like just the two of them. Anyway, let's look at these skills. Pretty expensive in terms of spell points, but it adds 20 to physical attack, which is pretty kicking. Also 20 here. And this would be Mikshuana's first ranged attack. And a range of 4 at that. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, this looks like it's a holy attack. And Kisnir's is a fire attack. Which I guess is typical of them. But still, a four ranged holy attack. And the base damage would be about 54, 53. Yeah, that's going to be convenient. I mean, I won't be able to capture things with it since it's the wrong skill. But I might make a use on some of the tougher enemies. Especially with that range. We don't have a lot of range for attacks. Anyway. Next time I'm going to head down to the Way of Flowing Spirits and handle Rosaline's scene. Oh hey, a four star mining. Is that a first? I haven't been paying attention for a while. Oh, and the seven color mushroom. I haven't gotten any of those and I need them. For... Uh... It slips my mind, but it's something important. In any case. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.